are looking live at the Gene Policini Center on the campus of the Rochester Institute of Technology where classes ended today and finals technically begin next week. But oh, these Tigers, they got a big test this weekend as RIT welcomes Providence to town for the very first meeting between these two programs. You are watching RIT Sports Zone pregame live presented by Taylor the Builders. Over the next half hour, we'll have highlights, analysis, interviews, and much more as we get you set for face-off between the Tigers and Friars at 7.05. As we look high above the RIT Sports Zone broadcast center, just behind section 109, our new home this season, we will be with you before every men's home game here on campus. Come on out, join the broadcast, or catch us live all season long on Time Warner Cable. Good evening, I'm Kevin Roach. We're so glad you could join us here tonight for RIT Sports Zone pregame live. Well, what a difference a few weeks can make. The last time we were with you, the Tigers halted their four game losing streak with a weekend sweep of first place Army. And since then, RIT has been rolling. Last weekend, the Tigers visiting Niagara, making the trip down I-90 to face their old rivals, the Purple Eagles. Oh, first period, Tigers on the power play. Chase Norrish, the one-timer, his fifth goal on the year, put RIT in front, one nothing after one. Second period, Liam Karens, the shot, it deflects off a Niagara player and in for his fifth on the year. A power play goal made it 2 nothing RIT. Just 50 seconds later, the freshman Ryan Kruper really coming into his own over the last month. Gets one to trickle through. RIT led 3 nothing. Niagara would pull goalie Jackson Tykrob, but it didn't matter. Miles Powell scores on the power play as well. His eighth goal on the year. RIT would lead 5 nothing after two periods. The power play was the story as RIT swept the weekend series. Series. Tigers went 8 for 15 on the man advantage for the weekend, boosting their power play efficiency from 24th to 3rd in the nation. So thanks to a five-game winning streak, the Tigers have risen from 8th in the conference to sole possession of first place. RIT leads Army by two points. Robert Morris Canisius are tied for third with 13 points apiece. Tigers don't get back to Atlantic hockey play until after the new year when they host last place Sacred Heart here at the Policini Center. So the Tigers will wrap up the calendar year away from Atlantic hockey play with two games against Providence this weekend and a December 30th matchup at Bowling Green. But if you've followed the Tigers since they moved to Division One, that's not exactly great news. RIT has won or tied just 22 of their 71 non-conference games. All oh, the Friars were on the ice this morning. Two years ago, they won the national championship last season. They tied for first in their league, but this year so far has been a bit of a struggle. Only one win in seven conference games, and they suffered an early season loss to Atlantic Hockey's Holy Cross. Head coach Nate Lehman said despite losing most of the guys from that title team, once you win it all, expectations are still sky high. I mean, we know we get everyone's A game. I think it helps us improve. I think it helps us get better. Um, we like it. You know, it's... it's uh, we're having a little bit of an uncharacteristic season. Um, you know, we're a young team, but you know, I, I like that the expectations are high. It means that uh, it means that people expect us to have a great program. It means we have the potential to have a great program, and you know, it's something that uh, you know we look forward to every day. I mean, we're young, but that was something that we knew was going to be hard. And I think we've been playing well the past few weekends. Actually, we just maybe we haven't been scoring or whatnot, but um, truthfully, I think that. We're playing well, and the young guys are starting to get it and getting coaches' systems and stuff. So uh, we're looking forward to this weekend. And RIT hasn't had a lot of success against Hockey East in the Division I era. Tigers are 1-6-2 and two overall heading into this weekend's series with Providence. The lone victory, however, all the biggest in school history. You might remember it, 2010, when the Tigers beat New Hampshire to win the East Regional in Albany, and they would advance to the Frozen Four in Detroit. The Tigers looking for their sixth straight win here tonight. The last time RIT won six or more in a row during the regular season, you have to go back to that frozen four year of 2009 and 2010. On the injury front, the Tigers will be without Gabe Valenzuela tonight. Valenzuela sprained his ankle in practice on Wednesday. Ryan Kruper will join Liam Karens and Eric Brown's line with more on the Tigers in tonight's big matchup sports zone. Stacy Pengen joins us live ringside. Good evening, Stacy. Good evening, Kevin. Yeah, you just said the Tigers are coming off a nice win streak, five games, looking to make it six. We're joined by Danny Smith, and you had an impressive game 
uh, the last weekend as well. Talk about what you have to do to keep this run going against a very impressive team. Well, we know, uh, we know Providence is going to be a good team playing in Hockey East. So we just got to stick to what we've been doing. I think we've been a lot, uh, a lot better defensively these last five games since our streak started. So it all starts at defense. I think uh, the offense will take care of itself from there. You've been uh, getting some good power play goals as well. Is, is special teams a big deal? Oh, yeah. Huge. It's, this year, I feel like there's a lot more penalties being called this year, a couple more new rules. So uh, we work hard on practice uh, on both PK and power play, and obviously our uh, power play was huge for us last weekend. Um, so hopefully we can keep it going. All right. Well, good luck, and thank you very much. Back to you. All right, Stacey, we'll check back with you tonight during our broadcast of Tiger Hockey. Well, still ahead on the program, time is running out. If you want to win this phenomenal piece of Tigers memorabilia, you see it right there. We'll tell you how you can get your hands on this RIT Tigers custom sports chair in just a bit. Plus, Todd Skirving, our senior forward, might actually be making the biggest impact of his career this season off the ice. We will explain. You're watching RIT Sports Zone pregame live. goes. O'Connor catches. He'll leave. Oh, it's in! Oh, my God! Matt O'Connor for the second straight game gives the opponent a gimme, and we're tied at three. Wow. The Terriers are stunned. Stunned. Yeah, the whole place is stunned. Providence is stunned. Michael Majenkowski wins the faceoff. Tanev! Shot! Score! college hockey game of the year. Face off. Terriers have it. Eichel will try to get the red line and go across. He does. Here come the Terriers. One last chance to send this game to overtime. Home it towards the net. Coming over to get it is Rodriguez. To the net. Not going to get there. Saucy Rossi can't get it out. Grizzlick down the line front. Little Rodney. Big man on campus. Biggest win in Friars hockey history taking place right there. The 2015 National Championship when they knocked off conference rival Boston University to win the school's very first championship. Providence has made 12 trips to the NCAA tournament overall, including the last three seasons. They've advanced to the Frozen Four. They've advanced four times along the way. And look at this roster loaded tonight, again with talent. Nine NHL draft picks in the lineup tonight. Well, we turn to our top draft picks now. The voice of Tigers hockey, Gene Battaglia and John DiTullio, will be calling what is no doubt the biggest non-conference game to date in the three-year-old history of the Policini Center. The Tigers know where they stand in conference, but Wayne Wilson said this week that these two games with Providence will show how they rate in the national picture. Good evening, guys. Good evening, Kevin. And uh, yeah, it was only 20 months ago, Providence winning the national championship. I got to give kudos to Wayne Wilson for scheduling Providence. Huge, huge, no question about it. Kudos to Nate Lehman. Took this program over six years ago, came in from Union, and has really revitalized Providence hockey, which was down until he got in here. But you're right. To be the best, you got to play the best. And I tell you, Wayne Wilson doesn't hide from anyone in the country. They go out and schedule some of the best teams they can. Providence a big-time opponent. Well, does Providence have talent? Yes. <laughs> they have nine NHL draft yeah. picks on uh, the roster, including uh, one guy who will be with the Buffalo Sabres after graduation, that being Florentino, the defenseman. Yeah, just a fifth-round pick of the uh, Buffalo Sabres back in uh, 2013. Leads their defenseman uh, with five goals. Big-time player, big kid. Talking with Wayne this week, does a lot of things well. Big frame, great on special teams as well. So we'll get a good luck, uh, good, uh, get a good look at him tonight because there's the future, the Amherst and possibly the Buffalo Sabres as well. Well, the RIT Tigers, boy, did they explode at yep. Niagara. One injury, though, however, Gabe Valenzuela with the ankle sprain. He will not be available this weekend. So the freshman, Ryan Kruper, who's been impressive, now goes up to that Karens and Brown line. He's been on fire, tallied two goals in that sweep over Niagara last weekend. The freshman 
isn't playing like a freshman anymore. This kid has really settled in, really highlighting that great freshman class that Wayne and Brian brought in. He's on fire right now. You look at the stats, and when you get a freshman, you get confidence. He's really going big time right now, really playing well. Talk with Wayne. He's getting better with more ice time, and when you could see that last week against Niagara getting two goals. Well, the Tigers taking on the hockey East foe here, John. Be nice to get a point or two tonight. What has to nothing, happen? Nothing wrong with that. When you're talking about two heavyweights going at it, they've got to keep the power play hot. They're third in the country. Eight power play goals in a sweep last weekend at Niagara. 20 minutes at a time. This is you, know, you can't go for that quick knockout. This is going to have to play full 60 minutes, but 20 minutes at a time. And listen, talk with Wayne uh, yesterday. Their goalie, Hayden Hockey, solid. Doesn't do anything really spectacular. He's solid, but you've got to pepper him. You've got to get pucks to the net. That'll be a key tonight for the Tigers. Hayden Hawk, you've seen every minute yes. this season for Providence. So, Kevin, excited to call this one tonight. We send it back to you. Yeah, it's looking forward to it, guys. We will see you both at the top of the hour. Well, RIT has a long list of successful alums working in the States and around the globe, for that matter. In October, you might remember, we introduced you to a 2008 hockey alum who in the last two years has quit his job and started a brand new company, which has been named one of Canada's top three most promising small business startups, thanks to a simple drawing and a dream. Like many RIT hockey alums, Ricky Walton took a shot at playing in the pros. I went over to Novi Sad, Serbia. Uh, played a little bit in Croatia and Novi Sad. Uh, I was like the Wayne Gretzky of Serbia, <laughs> the five foot eight Wayne Gretzky of Serbia. Um, after that, I, I shut it down. I didn't see a future in hockey. After his brief stint in Europe, the 2008 business management grad returned home to Canada and jumped into the world of sales. At one point, did you realize that what you were doing career-wise wasn't working out for you. Yeah, well, we spoke a little bit offline. I actually had a pretty dramatic uh, story happen to me. In uh, August 2014, I lost my mom. Um, I took it really tough. I mean, it was one of those things where, you know, just going through the motions. So from probably the last half of uh, 2014, um, I just worked at my normal job for the food science company. And then it hit January 2015. And I was like, what am I doing? Why am I doing this? So I literally just quit, had nothing, um, cashed out some RSPs, some savings, and I, I wanted to figure out you know, what was important to me in life. Uh, after losing my mom, like I said, it just, it kind of puts everything in perspective. Just one month after quitting his job, a drawing and a dream turned Walton's world around. And a man named Lindsey Weatherden approached me. He's like, listen, I have a great idea. I wasn't able to bring it to life. He's like, I want to meet you for drinks, you know, offline, and I want to introduce it to you. I'm like, great. So I ended up meeting uh, Lindsey Weatherden with Rob Tarantino. He ends up showing me, uh, for the, the Toronto fans, a Phil Kessel jersey um, drawing on a chair. I, I looked at it, I was like, I mean, this is great. I mean, I love it. And so he says, you know, if you like it, he's like, uh, I'm going to give you free reign to take it and run with it. So we literally took that drawing on a piece of paper that day on February 7th, 2015, um, and we brought it to life. Last October, My Custom Sports Chairs was born. Walton and his team of seven have since inked licensing deals with the NHL, CFL, NCAA, and the National Football League. You start with the one league, it's kind of like a domino effect. You know, you, they give you that instant credibility to, you know, oh, they're officially licensed with the NHL already? Okay, now when we go to the CFL, it's a little different. When we go to the NFL, oh, okay, you got these leagues. And so it's kind of been a snowball effect. While most of the custom sports chairs are available across North America, the NFL license is exclusive to Canada for now. Every officially licensed doesn't give companies under three years old a license. So what we're doing to kind of get past that is they're telling us is because your, your offering is so unique that we want to offer that to our customers now. So we don't want to wait for three years. So we had that conversation with the NFL and we're, I mean, I don't want to, I don't want to jinx it, um, but we potentially could have that North American license by November of this year. I want people to see us as an established, credible product. And that's, we're not going to go offline from that. So, you know, when you see our chair, you're going to see that officially licensed symbol on the bottom. It's like you're buying a jersey on a chair. And if we can continue to grow our corporate customized business, that's great. But our core business and always will be our officially licensed products. The company has been wildly successful. In just one year, that original drawing has led to nearly $1 million in sales. Could you have seen ending up where you are now and, and where you're headed? Absolutely not. Um, 
you know, I, 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 I saw, you know, the writing on the wall. I thought it was a great idea. I thought it'd be very receptive to people. But the, the speed that we're growing and the snowball effect that we're growing, um, I didn't see the pace that it was going to go at. Now we're, we're selling in, you know, a lot of the NHL shops and a lot of the CFL shops. And, you know, you go to the arena and you see our, our chair in there in the shop. It's like, you know, those one of those moments you step back, you look at it, you're like, wow, it's, you know, you can't really believe, you know, this is happening, you know. So, uh, like I said, I knock on wood every day. I'm very grateful for what's happening here. And I feel privileged to be able to do what I want to do. Oh, a great story about Ricky Walton, a 2008 alum here at RIT. That is a live look right there inside the atrium of the Gene Policini Center here at RIT where we have the RIT Tigers custom sports chair on display. Thanks to Ricky Walton, our friends at MyCustomSportsChair.com. Fans, no doubt, watching here tonight or in the arena wanting to know how they can make this seat their own. Well, time is running out tonight. Your final chance to enter the RIT Sports Zone custom chair giveaway. All you have to do is like the RIT Sports Zone Facebook page, comment on our post about the chairs. That's all. A winner will be chosen tomorrow. If you don't win, of course, go ahead and build your own custom chair at MyCustomSportsChairs.com. Be sure to use the promo code SPORTZONE for $50 off at checkout. And of course, they're extending that discount for us throughout the holiday season. We certainly thank them for that. Well, still to come on the show, the RIT women's hockey team was on the ice this afternoon. Highlights are on the way. Plus, we'll introduce you to the boy who's become the men's hockey team's best buddy this season. It's all next. You're watching RIT Sports Zone pregame live. on pregame live RIT Tigers it's hockey night in Rochester as they take on Providence out of Hockey East faceoff set for 705 well Rochester has a long history of giving back to its own and supporting its neighbors in need not just during the holiday season but throughout the year that includes RIT and its hockey programs this season Todd Skirving and his Tiger teammates are being the best buddies they can be for nearly 20 years, John Lawrence dedicated himself to improving the life of children as a coach, teacher, and mentor. I think he sees the power of children and what they're capable of and the potential that children hold. Uh, and I think he really wanted to help nourish that and help that grow. Nicknamed Muddy, John dreamed of being able to help children affected by cancer and other chronic illnesses. There are some wonderful organizations in the area for children, and we all acknowledge that, and he acknowledged that. He just thought there would be a, a different type of organization that supported kids doing what they love to do all the time. Sadly, Muddy didn't get the chance to complete his mission. He passed away in 2008 from cancer, but his legacy lives on today thanks to his family who started Muddy's Buddies in 2009. What's the mission of Muddy's Buddies? The mission is to support uh, children in a variety of ways throughout the community. It's not just about sports. Sports is pri our primary connection to the community, but we like to support uh, children of whatever their interests are, whether it's music, whether it's art, whether it's theater, whatever a child's interested in, we want to connect them to the community. We, you know, initiate the relationship, we foster the relationship, we nourish the relationship, but then we step back and we watch the relationship grow and that's what it's all about. This past summer, senior forward Todd Skirving spearheaded RIT's first connection with Muddy's Buddies. I've had a number of coaches reach out to us. I can count on two fingers the number of athletes, student athletes that reached out to us. Todd was one of them and I knew of speaking to him the first time that we had something special and I was very, intent on making this work out. Going back to when I was a little kid, my dad always said, you know, make the time of the day to uh, make a difference in other people's lives. And my parents kind of always taught me that because, you know, I was the kid who was always looking for autographs after games and whatnot, and just to see uh, a hockey player after a game. So I thought it would be important to uh, make a difference in uh, other people's lives, and it just so happened to be Muddy's Buddies. Zachariah Merrill, a cancer survivor, has been one of Muddy's Buddies since 2010. Now, thanks to Skirving, Zachariah spends every Tuesday with the Tigers. What do you like about it? Uh, what I like about it is like, getting to meet new people. 
and other teams and see how they do things. Do you have a favorite player on the RIT hockey team? Uh, Todd. And I just look forward to seeing him get a goal. Hey guys, hey. Why are you blushing? Yeah, I mean, he's been an outstanding uh, young man. Uh, it means the world to us that there's kids out there that are willing to reach out and do something random like that. They email Todd daily, pretty much. He's always in talk with them. We've been to quite a few games so far. Uh, so it's been a good experience. You know, things can get tough uh, for you being a student athlete. Finals are coming up. The season is starting to get into the thick of things. Um, when you look over on Tuesdays and see him sitting there with his family, what does that mean to you to, to be a part of this? I mean, we could always do something in someone else's life to make their lives better. It's just a simple little act of kindness and just as simple as having them sit and watch our practice, you know, that's making their day and I think that's very important for not only us, but, you know, RET hockey. This relationship we want to extend beyond the game, beyond the season, hoping that it's a lifelong commitment and a lifelong relationship. And, and it takes a really special person to deliver that. It's not for everybody on the team and we recognize that and we're totally comfortable with that. And we appreciate that actually. But we also appreciate individuals like Todd Skirving who can really kind of step up and do it and get it. Muddy's Buddies has been a huge success. Currently there's over 100 teams still waiting to team up. What would Muddy think of Muddy's Buddies? <laughs> uh, he would think it was super cool. He would think it was perfect, it was right up the alley, right up his alley, but he would undoubtedly have a couple critiques and ways to make it better, and I, I'm 100% certain his ideas would make it better. A uh, great job by Todd Skirving and the Tigers and Muddy's Buddies. Uh, certainly a great organization in our community. Now, Muddy's Buddies is a nonprofit organization that continues to aid children and families in need throughout our area. They're always looking for new buddies and new connections despite the waiting list. For more information on this organization or to make a donation, head to their website, Muddy's Buddies. Com. Well, if you're heading out to the RIT Providence game tomorrow, just a reminder that it is Teddy Toss Night. Fans are asked to bring a new stuffed animal to throw out on the ice following RIT's first goal. All stuffed animals will be donated to Rochester Regional Health System's Children's Unit in the coming weeks. And if you're heading out to the women's game as well, we got a double header here at the Policini tomorrow. We encourage you to bring in new unwrapped toy to donate to Toys for Tots. For your generosity, you'll receive free admission to the Tigers 105 game against Bemidji State and also a free food voucher to use right here in the Policini Center. Speaking of the women, RIT hosting Bemidji State earlier this afternoon. First period, the Beavers can't clear the puck out of the zone and Claudia Black's going to come up with the loose puck and she's going to put it in for her second goal on the season. RIT and Bemidji were tied at one after one. Second period, less than five minutes in, Haley Mack to Melissa Hunt. For the one-timer beating Jenna DeYoung, the power play goal right there puts the Beavers in front by a score of 2-1. to one. Four minutes later, it's Bemidji on the rush. Emily Berglund finding Emma Torres. Bemidji wins the first ever meeting between these two programs by a final of 3-1. to one. Again, they'll get another game in tomorrow here at Policini at 105. Well, we are closing in on game time here at the Policini Center. They turned the lights off on me. Tigers and Friars take the ice for introductions in mere moments. We'll send you back upstairs to John and Gene next. This is RIT Sports Zone pregame live. Hey, don't forget the best way to catch RIT all season long. Right here at the Gene Policini Center. You can purchase single game tickets to RIT men's and women's hockey by visiting the Policini Center box office Monday through Friday from 10 to 6 by calling 475-4121 or online at RITHockey.com. Reminder, we are back with you tomorrow night as RIT and Providence wrap up this non-conference series. Coverage begins, as always, 6.30 with RIT Sports Zone pregame live 
presented by Taylor the Builders, followed by all the action between the Tigers and Friars on Time Warner Cable Sports Channel 26. Meanwhile, we'd like to recognize the tremendous accomplishments of three RIT student athletes. Volleyball Sarah Sibis and cross country's Emma Jones and James Bailey earned All-American status following outstanding fall seasons. Emma Jones finished 34th overall at the Division III Cross Country Championships, became the first All-American in program history. James Bailey finished 27th at the championships, while Sarah Sibis led the nation with an NCAA single season record of 770 kills. All three will be honored here tonight during the first intermission. Our congratulations to all of them. Well, that does it for this edition of RIT Sports Zone pregame live. We thank you so much for watching. Up next, Gene Battaglia and John DeTulio join us with the call as RIT faces Providence. Enjoy the game, everyone. RIT Sports Zone live begins now. <laughs>